So earlier, Joel asked me, what are you talking about tonight? I said, MapReduce. He said, well, that's trivial. I implemented it 20 years ago. And then John said, what are you going to talk about tonight? I said, MapReduce. He said, oh, that's just Peach. <laughs> so I actually looked at Wikipedia yesterday to see if I was, in fact, going to present MapReduce, a version of MapReduce. And I said, what the hell are these guys talking about? I have no idea. The MapReduce implementation that arose in the course of this implementation of the 1010 query language was designed to uh, run tabulations at servers, each of which has uh, mapped in uh, one or more tables, uh, to run the appropriate aggregation function, sum or average, something like that, and then drag the results back to the, to the main server and, and reduce those aggregations to give you a result. So MapReduce in this implementation is two lines of code. It's an M function and an R function. And then there's um, some auxiliary functions, including the definitions of the, of the aggregation functions and the reduction functions. And this is, uh, this is extracted from the 1010 uh, query language uh, implementation, which I commend to your attention, because I think it's a really interesting alternative to SQL and, and KSQL. Uh, it's a state-based query language, which is it concatenative? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it's a nice property. Um, so um, this is used in the, uh, in the, in the course of the, of the query language to reduce uh, what uh, in 1010 is called, are called tabulations, which are select by X, select aggregation function of column by column. So I've rewritten the M and R functions uh, to step through the elements, the computational elements, and to display them and their results. And that's what I'm going to run. And um, I really do think uh, the, the, there are some interesting features of this, of this implementation. But if, if you people are like me, you don't really understand something until you tear it apart. So you run it yourself, look at it, tear it apart. I mean, a 10 minute exposition is not going to give you a lot of insight, although I'm sure it'll raise a lot of questions. Oh, and I should say that this version of K that I included, that this runs on, is kind of old. I was hoping to be able to rewrite it for the current version, but I didn't have the time. I, was, uh, I had other things that I had to do. So. So this is an early version of the K interpreter. It doesn't match what you'll find on the Shakti website. Um, but it's kind of close. OK, so what we're doing here is we're running, we're running the reduction function. Let me show you the, the query that we're running that, that would help. Uh, the first query we're running um, takes four arguments. It takes the symbol of the table. Oh, yes. Um, it takes a symbol of the table, it takes the, a, a selection constraint, a where clause, it takes a, a group by a column, F, and then it takes a dictionary of uh, parse trees. In this case, sum G and sum H and average of H. Now, where's the data coming from, you might ask? This is a very nice feature of the new K. I don't know, actually know... I've been out of the KDB Plus world for years. I don't know if there's anything analogous to this um, built into KDB Plus. But in this case, I have a, um, a dictionary. Let's open it up. Uh, TQ, I think. Or, oh, no, I'm sorry, T. And it's got, it's hard to see, I realize. Uh, the, 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 the structure is as follows. Um, you got a dictionary. Um, you've got a set of files. Each file is constrained in this version to be a date. So year, month, day. Um, and then the value of the file is a dictionary of tables or key tables. So there's a couple of examples here. This is a simple one. It has a single table T in, in each dictionary. Uh, but there's also a TQ, which has... Uh, trades and quotes. 
And there's also a script called g.k, which you can run and will generate as much data as you want in as many files as you want. So, so this is a, these are small examples. Uh, and because I, I wanted to be able to show uh, in the trace, I want to be able to show the results. So the first thing we do in this query is we call r, reduce. In this case, rr, because I'm, I'm using the, the kind of tiny step version. Uh, t is t, uh, no constraint, uh, no uh, by clause is f, and here's our dictionary of, of parse trees. And notice that I'm mimicking the, sh the, the default display in the latest version of k, which um, has some very nice, uh, has two modes. You can, you can look at the k data you know, as k. It's the round trip version of k, so anything it spits out on the console, you can type in and get the value back, which we all love about, about um, earlier versions of K. Um, or you can use the display, the show version, the display version. So here's our dictionary of parse trees. Uh, the first thing we do is, ah, we run this U function. And what U does is it, um, and I, I thought I had, uh, I, I do have um, in the, in the script itself, uh, you can find the comments. Uh, well, actually, you can't. Um, oh, oh, it's in the documentation. In the documentation uh, for, the, uh, for this 1010.txt, I have annotations for each of these steps. And that was mainly for me, because otherwise I just completely forget uh, the thought that drove the code. Um, but you might find it useful. So here, what I'm doing is I'm taking each of these, um, these, these aggregations and I'm busting them out. I'm breaking them out into the aggregation functions that will need to be executed on the server. Now, you'll notice um, in this case that, and I've done this deliberately, that average is broken down into the, div the divide of the sum of h by the count of h. And we already are computing sum of h uh, and we don't want to do that twice on the server. So in the code, just you know, let, you know, be alert for this. In the code, there's a um, fairly trivial uh, way of, of making sure we run it once, report back to the main server, and expand it, and then do the reduction. So in this case, you know, we want to, for average, for example, we want sum and count, and then we want to, we want to uh, sum the sums and sum the counts and divide. Um, and in fact, here we go, we're, we, we, we immediately re reduce the, 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 uh, the aggregations to the uniques. Um, and then we generate three symbols, which correspond to the uniques. And um, we call the map function. Again, we call the map function with the, uh, the, the, uh, the same first three arguments, but the last argument is, um, you'll notice, is a, is a dictionary where the synthetic keys, 0, 1, and 2, are used as handles. K3 programmers, don't you wish we could do this? Uh, the, uh, but you know, K4 programmers, you're used to being able to create dictionaries with arbitrary domains. It's really wonderful. OK, now, an optimization. Our data is key, is, is segmented by date. The file names are the dates. Uh, so we don't need a date column in each of these tables. That would be silly, because it would just be one date for the entire table. So we do a little dancing around here to eliminate the date, so the date from the, in this case, uh, if the guy did a, a partition a group by uh, the date column, well, we just throw that away. We don't want to, we, we'll remember that he did that, but we don't care about it. And similarly for the constraint C, we're going to get rid of the date column. Now, again, I point out that in this, to get things rolling, we just said, look, we're segmenting by date. That column is always called D. This is actually, uh, some of you, Kate, VB programmers who use functional form will know that there's a question mark version of select. It's the functional form of select. In, in Shakti, it's uh, the pound sign. And in the latest version, Arthur can talk about this, 
we don't care about the constraint. There's only three arguments to the Shakti um, functional form, which is very cool, but you'll see why. Okay, so now I'm putting together a package here um, of the function I'm going to run, the selection function I'm going to run, the table I'm going to run, and then a package of three things, the purified selection constraint, the by clause, and the aggregations. And what we're going to do at this point, um, we're going to create a date, a date table. So these are our dates. And now we're going to use two colon. In this case, two colon in this version of K is synchronous IPC. So what the hell is .m.m? When you do a backslash L on a, a, a directory that contains all these files, um, what K does is it generates a, a bunch of processes, one for each file, maps in the dictionary associated with that guy, and what you wind up with in the master, the guy who loaded the directory, is a, a, a variable called .m.m, which is a, a dictionary that has dates as the keys and handles as the range. And .m.m is used to communicate via four colon, or in this case two colon, to, to actually run the aggregations. And here you can see I've got back, I've got back my two uh, aggregations from the two servers. What you saw up above here, the two guys I get back, are keyed. They're keyed on the on the by, the by clause uh, column, uh, or multiple columns. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna de-key them because what we wanna do, uh, I'm gonna skip some of this stuff which has to do, remember we filtered out the date from the two clauses, and then we wanna put it back. If the guy wanted to group by date, we're gonna have to put that back. So there's a little bookkeeping stuff. But basically what we're doing is, at this point, we've done a comma over um, HR, so, uh, that way now we've glued all this stuff together. The task now for the master is to reduce the aggregations, which it does in this line, and we get that's our final result. You can see that um, I've gotten the result I want, uh, and um, as we, once again, uh, you know, I, I, I recommend, if you're interested in this, uh, if you're interested, you can uh, download and unzip and run these examples uh, with or without. And, and, and again, the 1010.txt file, because um, I have, I'm challenged by anything more than a text file. Uh, th there's, um, this explains um, the model, the 1010 query language model. Um, and, uh, and also section three, uh, section three is the talk I should have given if I read it right from the documentation. It would have been clearer and shorter, uh, which actually explains how all this stuff works.